our next speaker is, uh, I believe, very well known to, uh, to many of us. Uh, Stephen Lewis is a health policy and research consultant based in uh, Saskatoon. He's an adjunct professor in health policy at Simon Fraser University. He served on various boards and committees uh, across Canada, including the Governing Council of the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, the Saskatchewan Health Quality Council, the Health Council of Canada, and the editorial boards of several journals, and he's also moderating the Quality Forum over the next two days, so certainly we're putting him to work. Stephen, welcome and thank you. So let her rip. Mind is about contrasts, the contrast between the system we have and the system we ought to have. It's about the yin and the yang of healthcare. What this image has to do with the yin and the yang, I have no idea, except it was the caption under the image I found on the internet, and I'm old, and what the hell do I know about Pecha Kucha? So this is the best I can do as an opener. Now, many of you know that healthcare is fraught with error, and error comes about because the holes align. All of the risk factors align, and this is the Swiss cheese model. And when they line up like this, hazards turn into errors, errors turn into harm, and harm causes grief. I want to turn that Swiss cheese model into more of a solid cheese model, where the cheese actually constipates the error process before <laughs> it can possibly start. We want that cheese to tra transform from Swiss to brick. And let's see if the hazards can get through that baby in the same frequency they do now. <laughs> now, this isn't always rocket science or the laws of thermodynamics. Wash your bloody hands. <laughs> if we could get everybody to wash their hands, healthcare would be a lot safer. Semmelweis, Semmelweis died a madman because people wouldn't wash their hands. This is serious business. We've also had an image of medicine that's basically the cowboy who comes along and fixes the problem. It's the TV surgeon view of medical care. And it may have had its day, but we all know that that day has long since passed because those people are causing a lot of Swiss cheese errors in the healthcare system despite the best of intentions. So as everyone else has said here, we need to transform this into a team approach to healthcare. And never mind the composition of the team. Some of you may want to kick out the naturopath and so on for territorial reasons. Some of you may think, <laughs> Some of you think massage belongs in a parlor that is advertised in the back of the paper, but it's the person at the center that's important. We also need to do a bit of inversion about where the money goes. Now, I'm not saying that the University of Texas Medical Center, of which that is an image, is a bad thing. It's going to get a lot of money, and it's going to serve a relatively small number of people. The problem is at the bottom that health promotion, preventive health, gets the sense. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't keep spending bucks on the University of Texas Medical Center or the UBC Medical School. More for that, indeed. <laughs> but we have to realize that if we're going to serve more people and we're going to achieve better outcomes, we need to change those cents into dollars. Maybe not the amount of dollars that goes into the sharp end of the system, but enough to work. It's an uphill battle, just like it's an uphill battle for a salmon to get to the spawning ground. You're going to face a lot of pressure against it. You're going to face a lot of hard, hard work in order to get upstream, because it's a cultural problem. We like the sharp end of the system, and we talk about the other end of the system, but we don't do it. And sometimes, when you fight the battle, you have a lot of problems that you haven't foreseen. <laughs> and sometimes those reforms aren't going to survive. But while some of the changes may founder and die a slow and ugly death at the hands of the bear of complacency, there are lots of fish going around that, and they're going to make it. For the person who needs the care, we want the journey simplified. This is not, by the way, a journey through the gastrointestinal tract, although <laughs> it sort of looked like it on second reflection. But again, I'm not gifted at this kind of image finding. But this complexity is a ser serious problem in healthcare. And the reality is you can't get rid of the complexity, but you should make it invisible to the person needing the care. The person needing the care should think this is a smooth, seamless navigation from the road to illness to health getting the service when you need it and how you need it in a straight line. You don't want to have to go through the maze, even though those of people working in it will have to navigate the complexity. And I'm saying to you, we need good, sharp-end health care. It's a wonderful thing to experience the joys of modern medicine, particularly, as in this case, if you happen to have a webcam attached to your forehead so you can take that image <laughs> just as they're about to open you up 
and fix whatever ails you. So let's use the technology. But we actually need more of this, as other people have said. We need to look at the community. We need to look upstream. We need to look at the determinants of health. And while we're at it, though it may be a little bit out of the box, let's put in a plug for child labor, such as we see here, <laughs> in, order to make, in order to make the system a little bit smarter. So what we have is a system that has a lot of money, and a lot of money goes into it, but interestingly enough, a lot of money outweighs the amount of good health we're producing. We are victims of diminishing marginal returns from our big investments in health care. But as people in the quality movement know, it doesn't have to be this way. You can actually get lower cost, better service, and better health if we work a lot smarter. And that is one of my dreams for the future, is that we will be able to tilt the scales in this direction and realize that money and sometimes is not, the, is not the solution, but it may actually be the problem. And if we succeed there, we won't have to look at more damn graphs like this, where Canada is a bloody embarrassment in things like doctors reviewing clinical performance annually. I mean, we should take some comfort that we whip the Swiss and the Norwegians. But that's not the kind of international competition that appeals to my cosmopolitan heart. So this, and note the literary source of this graph, this is where we should be in five years. We should be over to the left in five years. And to show that I'm internationally charitable, I want the Swiss and the Norwegians to get up there in the 70s and 80s too. Because this is the kind of performance that Canada should aspire to. And as others have said, and I strongly endorse as a data geek myself, the path to enlightenment it goes through better information. It's not the only pathway to enlightenment, but if we create an information highway that actually works for people, for citizens, for providers, for institutions, for people like Kathy Ulrich, we're going to get there. And then finally, we won't have this contrasting Dorian Gray image of, a, of the dark side of healthcare, uh, which we're trying to get over but we're going to find beauty in healthcare that resembles that handsome dude on the left, not that poor hairless bastard on the right. <laughs> Thank you.